Hi, uh, my name is Lori Barfield. I am the organizer for the career fair here at AppSec Cali. It's our first year where my uh, volunteer team is doing an AppSec Cali event. And we're uh, situated over at the Marion Davies guest house in the second floor room. Uh, part of the reason they asked me to do a lightning talk was so people uh, would get the, so we could get the word out about the career fair and make sure that people that want those services uh, know what we have to offer. But also the reason why I'm doing the talk is to tell you what we're offering and when so you can maximize uh, your time here at the conference. Um, uh, you, can, you, you can just incisively go across uh, for the talks that you need or the consulting that you're looking for if you know what time of day it is. So... Uh, uh, my background is that I'm a hiring manager. Um, it is probably one of the few uh, job fairs or career events that's not run actually by recruiters. This, uh, we have a very different approach as a result. Um, I'm also a hiring contrarian. I've been a hiring manager in, in, in several different industries and size of companies ranging from little tiny startup all the way to you know, world-class corporations. And I can promise you that HR uh, groups and hiring managers do it wrong just about everywhere. So I've been a hiring contrarian almost since the very beginning, decades, you're laughing, decades ago, uh, just because uh, we've got some pretty self-defeating practices. Um, and uh, we have uh, career consultants there on site all day long at the career fair. So when you're not um, attending a talk, uh, you can wander over there and you can get some one-on-one -on -one consulting with them. And uh, shout out to the AFSEC Cali staff who have been so supportive and they work so hard. Uh, just to clarify very quickly, uh, Raise Me is the name of the volunteer effort. Um, and you'll see some of uh, this uh, ShellCon uh, logo around. That's because it was born out of an InfoSec conference called ShellCon three years ago, also at the beach in El Segundo. Um, and, uh, and it just kind of uh, grew a life of its own after that. Uh, we started out just doing the annual conference, and then it was last year we did one event a quarter at different conferences, uh, like Layer 1, for instance. Um, and now we're doing about one a month this year. Uh, and uh, Salute is, uh, we started Salute two years ago. That is our special effort that focuses on helping veterans re-career from military and transition into civilian life. And here's the schedule, so you know exactly when you, when you can go over. Right after this talk, I'm gonna go uh, across the way and we're going to have the resume clinic. None of these require registration. None of them cost anything. This is a service AppSec Kelly is providing to its whole community, uh, which means companies, hiring managers, and people looking for jobs. Um, so uh, the first clinic is Resumes that Raise Me Way. You can wander in, uh, stay for a little while, and leave, ask your questions. It's a group environment. It's very helpful. No two resume clinics have ever been the same. Uh, and then uh, our sponsors are already arriving and setting up. You'll be able to go to the Career Expo um, anytime today. We have told people to focus on the 2 to 4 p.m. hour for the most traffic, but they actually will be available all day if you'd like to come across. And uh, at 4.20, uh, I'm sorry, and then also at 2 o'clock, we're going to have our second clinic, which is every engineer's very favorite topic, interviews and negotiations. Y'all love interviewing, right? You're great negotiators, right? Uh, well, we created that clinic because all of the people I spoke to one day when we were volunteering, not one of them ever negotiated a job offer. They had had many jobs. They had never negotiated with the company at all, not even a little. And I said, we need to have a clinic for this uh, because we can be trained. Um, and uh, anyway, and that, so that starts at 2 o'clock. And then at 4.20, uh, Paul, our resident uh, Marine Corps veteran, uh, will be giving his uh, talk, which was a mini keynote last year at a different conference uh, from private to CISO. He's a C-level executive, and he wants to share his path to success with everybody. It's really inspiring. It's not just for veterans. And we'll close about 5 o'clock, but I'm not going to uh, shoo anybody out the door. Okay, so the first service we offer is career consulting. Okay. Um, there, it, it, this isn't just, it, uh, there are a lot of technical conferences that have job fairs, and they do have often recruiters that will look at your resumes and help you uh, review your resumes. Sometimes they'll do mock interviews, which is also very helpful, uh, but uh, we actually want to offer services to the entire community. So we're, we're not just about uh, job hunting or uh, churning jobs. We want to help hiring managers, we want to help people stay in their jobs, but get more fulfilling career paths uh, so that there is a long-term term stability. Um, we want to help um, HR departments uh, change their practices so they can hire people that are unconventional for these really tricky information security roles that are hard to fill. Uh, anyway, so uh, the kinds of things you can get, you can get a, a, 
a, a career checkup. Uh, how's, my, how's my title? How's my salary? How, just how am I doing? You don't have to have your resume for that, and it's confidential. And it doesn't mean that you're, you're looking for a job. It just means you, you, you're trying to become informed about what, where you fit in the marketplace. For newcomers, of course, we have breaking into InfoSec. For job seekers, this is more the usual fare, resume, mock, interview, uh, job hunting assistance. Uh, we'll actually sit down with you. And our volunteers, even if they are recruiters, will help you find a job anywhere. They're supposed to be agnostic. Uh, Raise Me is different. Uh, it is different because I'm a hiring manager. I'm not a recruiter. Um, and I want to help people actually get hired into roles where they are uh, the perfect fit. I want, I want it to be a two-way road. So uh, I believe that uh, there's a lot of unnecessary churn. I think that, um, I mean, recruiters are doing their job. They're trying to move people into new roles. Uh, they're trying to convince you to leave because they'll give you a little bit more money. Um, and uh, this is good for a career, but it is not good to only focus on salary, um, which is where a lot of the industry is rewarded. Uh, there are other rewards that we get from our careers that aren't uh, monetary, and they're just as important. Um, I'd like to see you get the most out of your current role. Um, I want, to, when, if you're in a position where you do, you are ready to change jobs, you know it, I want you to make a very well considered career decision. I, I don't want this to, I don't want anybody uh, that we can help to feel like they're in a situation where they are bailing, okay? Um, also, we believe in the team. So we support hiring managers as much as we support people looking for roles. Okay, so we have all of, so are there any managers here? Oh, okay, so we have for, content for you as well. So this will tell you when you need to come. Uh, here's, how, uh, here's how our resume uh, re um, review process works. We actually stay in touch with people after the conferences. Here is a first cut at a master resume. It's starting with a blank page, what do you do? He just wrote a narrative, all the jobs he'd had and the volunteer work he did. It's not a resume, but it's how you start, right? Um, and then after working with us, um, he made his, a master resume. A master resume is a technique that I teach because I think it's the most important way to prepare yourself uh, for a career change. Um, master resume is everything uh, that you've done going all the way back to your paper route when you were 16 years old, uh, your accomplishments, uh, your academic awards. You put everything in there. And it's 20 pages long maybe. Now, that's not the resume you're going to send anybody, but it is, the, it is the cache of information that you're going to draw from. And when the process of creating this long master resume is going to help you crystallize what you want to do next. I, I can't tell you how many people at this stage have said, oh, I know I want to do penetration testing or something like it. And by the time they do this, they want to do something very different. Because they've gone through this whole process and they realize, wow, I can, I'm really good at data mining. Or sometimes they even get out of the profession and they realize they want to they do something that's uh, less technical. Uh, here is a final version of this person's targeted resume. Uh, here, his master was uh, several pages and his targeted resume was a little bit bigger than that. Um, and he's got now a clear idea of the role he wants. And this resume probably takes 10 minutes to create from a master because he knows what he's looking for. He's got a description of the job he's looking for. He can go to Monster, go to LinkedIn, find a job, uh, look at the requirements that the hiring manager in the HR group have asked for, and pull over the information from his resume until he's proven his case that he's qualified for that role. And this is what it looks like. That's how we do it. And so here's the contractors. So I, we have brand new contact for con, uh, content this year for contractors. Um, uh, like, and here's the type of advice that I can give, that, that we can share with you. Uh, my experience about when to leap to contracting, um, uh, what, how much to charge, uh, what, what goes in the contract, um, how to get paid. I've been on the wrong side of that too. Um, what's yours is yours, intellectual, intellectual property. And I'm not an expert, I'm not a legal resource, I'm just a person that's done it for a lot of years. So I can share my mistakes with you and then if you come and it's a group setting, you may hear really good advice from the people around you. Uh, this other clinic, uh, the first clinic, I'm sorry, resumes the Raise Me Way. Uh, this is all standard dogma out in the recruiting and uh, job placement industry. Uh, about how to do a resume. I'm a hiring manager and I'm already telling you, you're doing it all wrong. And I'm on a campaign to change the way people think about doing resumes because hiring managers are going absolutely nuts looking at the worst resumes in the world. Uh, I'll, I'll just give you one example. It's like, how many people know how long a resume should be? Two, how, pages. two pages. How long? A anybody, anybody disagree with that? One page. One page. How, long, how long should a resume be? How long should a book be? Okay, so that's why I disagree. 
I think as long as you have a story to tell, you know, there needs to be ink on the page. But if you, if you have distilled your targeted resume down to just the stuff the hiring manager needs to see, it's going to be exactly the length that needs to be. And then I'm not trying to read a resume with a, you know, uh, six point font and a quarter inch margin all the way around that's just so stilted I can't even get a read on who the person is I'm, I'm trying to, to, to get to know, right? So here's all these things I don't want you to do anymore. Come to my resume clinic and we'll fix you. Uh, the Raise Me approach, um, resume development is a process with a purpose. You don't write a resume in one day. It takes a little while, like solving a crossword puzzle. You, go, you get some of it done and then you go back later and you tune it up. And then you find a job post and you go, wait a minute, I want to add this to my resume. Um, I believe in the master resume approach, which is you don't just write one resume for one company and then send it to 40 companies. That is the wrong way to do it. Um, you tailor your resume to the posting. I believe in the essay format, uh, which is uh, just a term that I invented. Um, but uh, as a hiring manager, uh, the typical resume formats don't work very well for me. And you can, you can, you can find a format that works for uh, the, uh, the bots that need to process your resume for, for keywords, as well as human beings. So, uh, for if you are job hunting and you have conventional qualifications like a college degree that's targeted and all that, there's all these things we can talk about you can do to build up your qualifications for your next role. Um, certifications, it's alphabet soup. Uh, we can try to demystify some of these things. You'll get some opinions from people in, the uh, in your group, uh, what they think of all these. Um, uh, Recareering candidates especially, we have an industry that it's uh, ridiculous how hard it is for someone to uh, get hired to do information security if they have a degree in something else, no matter how uh, talented they are. Um, and that's because we have some practices that are self-defeating. Um, and so for those people, we tell them what unconventional qualifications to work on to edit their resume during their, their job seat. Um, uh, and there's also a difference between direct hire resumes versus consulting. So if you're thinking of becoming a consultant, you need to, you need to start with a new master and you need to refactor it. And I'll, 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 these slides are online. Don't take any pictures. I'll make sure you have every one of them, I promise. And then you can give me feedback on what's missing and we'll make them better for the next person. Uh, consulting for an agency is different than going independent. Uh, independent consulting. Um, and then if you're an independent consultant, you have to market yourself. That's one of the main differences. We'll talk about way pe ways people do that. Okay. Uh, the second clinic at two o'clock is interviews and negotiations. Like I said, everybody's favorite subject, right? Uh, I, can't, I can't tell you how many resumes I've read that read like book reports because engineers think that a resume is a book report. Uh, and uh, how many interviews, uh, they're, they're answering the questions just as, uh, just as uh, straight as they can, uh, which leads to some pretty amusing situations. Uh, but uh, here we go. For interviews, um, I will go through basic interview rules, which is just good wisdom. Uh, and uh, where to find the intel. All these are free services. Uh, we'll talk about the steps. Uh, so you can get, a, get an analytical look at what the job hunting process is. It's serialized. If you're stuck, if you go to a lot of interviews but you're not getting offers, there's something going on in the interviews that's going wrong and we can try to analyze that. If you're sending out 100 resumes, which you shouldn't be doing, uh, and not getting any calls back, we need to rework your resume, even if you think it's a work of art, right? So because it's serialized, we can narrow it down and find out where the process is going wrong and try to help you make recommendations. That compared to the hiring manager's process. So we try to put you in the head of, in the mind of the person across the table during the interview. Uh, this is what he's had or she has had to go through in order to try to get you hired. Um, and there, uh, anyway, so we'll cover that. Uh, there are illegal, depending upon where you're hiring people for, what country or where they're going to work, there are many illegal topics that you can't even accidentally ask about in an interview. You're a professional. You shouldn't do that. Uh, they can offer the, you know, a person can offer the information, but you certainly don't have to answer any illegal questions. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, there are other ways to get the information you need. You don't need this information anyway if you're a hiring manager to make a good decision, a very well-informed decision. Um, and negotiations, everybody's favorite, right? Who here has had an extended negotiation for a, a job offer? Really extended, okay, so a couple. So, you know, maybe 10%, less than 10%, 5% of you, maybe. Um, so we try to, we try to uh, put a little balance 
in the process of finding your next career position. Salary is not everything. All of these things are equally important. Of course, the amount of money you make has to meet your needs. That's not the same thing as, um, uh, you can't do that at the cost of all of the other aspects of a career, uh, not for long-term growth. Uh, characteristics of a good fit, uh, these are for people that have actually never been on the other side of the table, never interviewed anybody especially. Uh, how, do, how do hiring managers decide whether you're going to be the guy or not, right? Um, uh, we'll put you in their mind uh, so you understand uh, how, when you answer questions, how, what they're trying to evaluate. Uh, and there are a lot of things you can negotiate. These are over time. Uh, these are things that people have, uh, I've heard people do. I've, uh, they've been suggested are things that I've negotiated myself. And if you have more, if you come to this uh, clinic, uh, please give me uh, more ideas for things we can add to this. Um, recruiting senior talent. Uh, well, so this, there, this next set of slides is content that I have if any managers want to come and want help. Uh, there, I do a clinic um, that's just on hiring for diversity. Uh, because there are, uh, people tend to hire people who look just like themselves. Uh, it's, it's just, it's very natural. Uh, it doesn't mean there's <laughs> deliberate discrimination at all, and they may not even be aware of it, uh, but that's what people do. And so I have a, an exercise at a worksheet that I can walk managers through that actually puts, uh, makes it a really analytical process, and it takes the, a lot of the bias out of it. Um, and, uh, and so they, they ask for advice on the really impossible things, um, you know, had, you know, if you're, if you're trying to hire real senior people, if they're just passing, you need a really senior guy and, they're not, and you're not getting any, any, any answers um, back, uh, then we have some things you can look at. Uh, if, you, if you're looking at targeting millennials, we have some things that you need to talk about. Uh, women, um, is anybody here ha on a team that has no women at all? And have, have women interviewed and not taken the job? Yeah, they don't even interview. So there are things that, that, that we do sometimes in the job postings which make, uh, which give women the impression it's not gonna be for them uh, in general. Um, and, uh, and so uh, I've gotten uh, good feedback from uh, my co-organizer, I'm named Marissa, uh, on what the best practices are for job postings and other things that you do with recruiting women and minorities. What do you do if your team is already all white? Okay, this is a challenge. This is, it's, a, it's an obstacle, a, a, a glass window you have to break through. Um, and uh, there's actually good advice for that. It's not impossible. Ah, and last, uh, salute. Uh, salute, uh, we're very proud of salute. Um, and I wanna thank AppSec Cali. I know they offer um, some scholarships for veterans to attend. And, uh, and uh, salute, um, we have a, at the ShellCon conference in October, uh, we do have a half day of salute talks that are uh, by veterans and mostly for veterans. And um, Hector Soto is the gentleman running it and Paul's giving our talk today on salute at 420. And these are our sponsors. Um, many thanks to OWASP, uh, Citrix, iHerb, and Bird uh, will all be part of the expo today. Uh, like I said, they'll be, they'll be around earlier and they'll probably be around all day. Uh, they'll, we'll be focusing traffic at about 2 o'clock, but they're around, so you can visit any time you want and, uh, and get the latest scoop on their open positions. Now, that's the end of my slides, but the way we do it at Raise Me is um, answering questions and trying to help people is the most important thing. I'm not done until every white hat in Southern California is employed. <laughs> so, uh, does anybody have a really hard question? What is a really, really hard challenge, a really hard question for me? So we'll talk about the resume development process, I think will help you uh, decide what kind of work you want to try to target. It, doesn't, it, won't, it won't address the issue of is there a market for it and, and how much can you, can you charge and things, but it will help you decide, oh, this is the kind of work I really want to do every day now. So, okay, well, we'll I'm looking forward to talking to you. Thank you. So lovely, anybody else? I have a couple minutes, that's it. Okay, well. Thank you all very much. I hope to see, oh, wait, I'm sorry, go ahead. I will say that there is often, lingo is often misused. Uh, people are encouraged to put a lot of buzzwords in their resumes, a lot of acronyms. And so as a hiring manager, you'll end up with, uh, and, and, and recruiters that, that don't really understand the terms very well will sometimes encourage them to put certain things first in, in a different order. So you'll see, you know, uh, NNTP, SMTP, AWS on the same line, you know, or, you know, it just, uh, it becomes alphabet soup. 
Um, and so, yes, there there are terms, there are key keywords that need to that need to go on your resume, but you'll actually get most of those clues out of the job posting. So we recommend that you work with the job posting and you parallel the job posting. If there's 10 bullet items in the job posting, then there's going to be at least 10 bullet items somewhere in your resume that address that. So if a job posting requires a master's degree and you don't have one, you'll say, well, I've got a bachelor's degree and five years of experience. So you don't have to be an exact match in order to answer the question. And that's what the hiring manager needs. Not necessarily an exact match. You need to give him, the, 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 him or her uh, the, the information they need to determine if you're a good match. Answer. Uh, but I will, and, I, and I will say every situation is a little bit different. If you're looking for uh, something that's more of a standard role, and you know, like if you can scan LinkedIn and see five of them, you know, uh, then you're really not going to have any trouble finding a recruiter that can help point you to them. And you may not even need, that may be a situation where you don't need a recruiter at all. Exactly. And not using a recruiter can be to your benefit because it gives you more negotiability. Uh, if they, they can give you a signing bonus or a per diem or something they'd normally give to a recruiter. That, that, that's often the way it works. Um, but... Um, uh, yeah, why don't you come? Because we're going to have uh, recruiters, uh, volunteers, and you can talk to them about it. And you can decide. You can get to know them before you give any of them your contact information or anything. Our volunteers are industry professionals. They'll be, like me, either hiring managers, entrepreneurs, uh, recruiters, uh, or just industry, just engineers, people that have had some experience doing this. Um, and uh, they're, they're agnostic. They're going to try to help you the best they can. Uh, if you want to have an ongoing relationship with them after the conference, that's perfectly fine. You can tell them, take my resume and do something with it. But by default, they're not going to give your resume to anybody. This is just between the two of you. So, um, so you, I, I, I suggest that you go talk to the recruiters. There's a couple of them there, and I'll introduce you around. Okay? And it looks like I'm out of time. Uh, anybody else? Okay, well, I hope to see you at the career fair, and uh, thank you uh, for listening.